Raising part two, mysticism, psychology. Further, the heart has its reasons which the mind knows not of. The heart has its reasons which the mind knows not of. It is a matter of experience that in our moments of deep emotion, transitory though they be, we plunge deeper into the reality of things that we can hope to do in hours of the most brilliant argument at the touch of passion's door. For I open which uh, logic has butter on in vain for passion arouses to activity not merely the mind but the whole vitality of man it is the lover the poet the mourner the convert who shares for a moment the mystic's privilege of lifting the veil of isis which science handles so helplessly leaving only her dirty finger marks behind <laughs> The eager heart, eager and restless, goes out into the unknown. Uh -huh. This style of writing is like old fashioned a bit. I don't think we could write like this. It's uh, about a hundred years old. Uh -huh. The heart, eager and restless, goes out into the unknown and brings home literally, actually, quote, fresh food for thought. Uh -huh. Normal. Hence, those who the way you're reading. those who quote feel to think are likely to possess a richer, more real, if less orderly experience than those who think to feel interesting. There are interesting ideas, though. Do you think? It's like a, an artistic disposition versus a scientist in a way. We're at the age of science now, at the turn of the century, reading from Evelyn Underhill. The psychological law has usually proved in regard to earthly matters holds good also upon the supersensual plane. It, it was expressed once at, for all by the author of the cloud of unknowing hmm. 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 the author of the cloud of unknowing when he said of God, by love he may be gotten. And uh, holden by, but by thought of understanding, never. Hmm. You can't get God by understanding. Huh? The cloud of under, unknowing, you have to unknow. The cloud of unknowing said of God, by love he may begotten and held in, but by thought of understanding never goodness so he's sort of uh, hmm. well that's that's part of mysticism that exalted feeling that secret blind love pressing not the neat deductions of logic, uh, apologist proofs of the existence of the absolute, unseals the eyes to things unseen. Before, therefore, says the mystic, quote, what time that thou purportest thee to this work and feelest by grace that thou art called of God. Lift then up thine heart unto God with the meek stirring of love, and mean God that 
made thee, and brought thee, and the graciously hath called thee to thy degree, and receive none other than none other thought of God, and yet not all these, but if thou list for its sufficient thee enough, a naked intent direct unto God, without any other cause than himself. Here we see emotion and its proper work, a movement of desire passing over at once into the act of concentration. the gathering up of all the powers of the self into a state of determined attention. Hmm. Which is the business of the will. <laughs> this driving and drawing, says Rice. Quote, we feel in the heart and in the unity of all our bodily powers, and especially in the mm, desirous powers, this act of perfect concentration, the passionate focusing of the self uh -huh, upon one point where it is applied with a naked intent to real and transcendental things, constitutes in the technical language of mysticism the state of recollection, condition, condition which is particularly characteristic of the mystical consciousness and is the necessary prelude <laughs> to pure contemplation, that state in which the mystic enters into communion with reality. <laughs> we have then arrived so far in our description of the mechanism of the mystic, possessed like other men of powers of feeling, thought, and will, it is essential that his love and his determination, even more than his thought, should be set uh, upon transcendent reality. He must feel a strong emotional attraction towards the supersensual object of his quest, that love which scholastic philosophy defined as the force or power which causes every creature to follow out the trend of its own nature. This must be born of the will to attain communion with that absolute object, this will, this burning and an active desire, must crystallize into and express itself by that definite and conscious concentration of the whole self upon the object which precedes the contemplative state. We see already how far astray are those who look upon the mystical temperament as passive in type. Our next concern, then, will seem to be with this condition of contemplation, what it does and whether it leads. So what is, A, its psychological explanation, B, its empirical value. Now, in dealing with this and other rare mental conditions, we are, of course, trying to describe from what, without that which can only adequately be described from within, which is as much as to say that only mystics can really write about mysticism. Hmm. 
Unfortunately, many mystics have so written, and we, from their experiences and from explorations of psychology upon another plane, are able to make make a uh, Maintain elementary deductions, it appears generally from these, that the act of contemplation is for the mystic a psychic gateway, a method of going from one level of consciousness to another. <laughs> In technical language, it is the condition under which he shifts his field of perception and attains his characteristic outlook on the universe that there is such a, a characteristic outlook peculiar to no creator race is proved by the history of mysticism, which done demonstrates plainly Enough that in some man another sort of consciousness, I, another sense, may be liberated beyond the normal powers uh, we have discussed. This, quote, sense, uh, unquote, has attachments at each point of emotion to intellect and to will. It can express itself under each of the aspects which these terms connotate. Yet it differs from and transcends the emotional, intellectual, and volitional life of ordinary men. It was recognized by Plato <laughs> as that consciousness which can apprehend the real world as the ideas, its development is the final object of that education which his republic describes. It called for, it is called by Plotinus, Plotinus, quote, another intellect different from that which reasons and is denominated rash, rational. Its business, he says, is the perception of the supersensual, or in neoplatonistic, platonistic language, the intellectual world. It is the sense which, in the words of Theologico Germanica, has the power of seeing into eternity, the mysterious eye of the soul by which Augustine saw the light that never changes. It says al Khazali, a Persian mystic of the 11th century, quote, like an immediate perception, as if one touched its object with one's hand in the words of the great Christian successor, St. Bernard, it may be defined as the soul's true undaring intuition, the unhesitating apprehension of truth, which simple vision of truth, says Tom Thomas Aquinas, ends in a movement of desire. We read uh, part two of uh, page 28. Uh, this is long-winded, of course, of mysticism and psychology with uh, Emma Evelyn Underhill in mysticism with a guest star from the cloud of unknowing. <laughs>